Hello, hello. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, good, good. Are you ready for your 73 questions? Ready as I'll ever be. So, what's your name? I'm Rena Wynn. And where are you from? I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, born and raised. And what kind of student are you? I'm a DO student. And what year are you in the program? I'm a second year. Where did you go to undergrad? I went to Georgia State University for my undergrad. And how is the timeline of osteopathic medical school formatted? It's the same as an MD school, actually. So we'll have the four years of medical school, and then however many years of residency it'll take for you, depending on your specialty. Okay. Does the application process look any different than an MD school? Um, no. Um, it's called the ACOMIS, which is pretty much the DO equivalent of the AMCAS. You have your personal statement, which is super important. You have to take the MCAT, and then all the other sections are pretty much the same. Okay. What is the main teaching difference between MD and DO? Um, so in addition to the MD school curriculum, we have an additional 200 hours of osteopathic manipulations. Training. And can you explain briefly what is OMM? So OMM is basically just physical manipulations of a patient's like body to help them with any aches or ailments that they may have. Gotcha. So what's been your favorite part of medical school so far? Um, the seldom breaks that we get are definitely my favorite and most memorable part of med school. And why did you choose a DO school over an MD one? So growing up, I did a lot of Taekwondo and yoga, and I was able to see the interconnectedness and importance of mind, body, and spirit, which are coincidentally the three tenets of osteopathic medicine. So I thought pursuing this path would align more with my personal experiences and my values. Well said. Hmm. So, I'm also a fellow student. I know I get this question a lot, so I'm going to ask it to you too. Mm -hmm. It's never too early. What specialty are you interested in? I'm interested in <laughs> ob -GYN for now, but I do want to keep an open mind just so I can fully immerse myself in each rotation that I will be doing this summer, starting this summer. Very wise. Were there any specialties you immediately said, absolutely not for me? Um, before I started med school, I definitely said no to ob -GYN, but now that I've Taking the class and I saw how much you can advocate for women, women's health, and get to experience um, infectious diseases, I thought this was the perfect specialty for me. Okay. What first made you fall in love with the field of medicine? I think it was sometime in elementary school. There was a, um, like a brain festival in Atlanta, and I was able to hold a human brain in my hands, and I was like eight. But how cool would this be if I could do some more of this one day, you know? So, for ob mm -hmm. how long does your training take after undergrad, if you wanted to specialize in that? So it would be four years of med school, and then I believe three years of residency, depending on the specific program location that you go to. Gotcha. But what is the most unique part of being a medical student for you? Um, I don't know, like... I guess at this point in my life, a lot of my friends are getting married, having babies, buying houses, and I'm still like, it's basically like undergrad, you're just still studying, you don't really have any adult obligations, I guess. So that's like the weirdest thing. So how many hours on average do you think you study a day? Um, I want to say four to five hours. I know people study more, some people study less, but I think that's about average. It's okay, you got to be realistic. Yeah. So, why should someone choose to go DO instead of MD? You got to put on your kind of salesman oh cap now. Um, well, I personally think that DOs emphasize a lot of human touch, and I think that's very important when it comes to patient care. Um, I don't know. I, I just think that's important for me. Um, it depends on the person and what they're interested in. Well, devil's advocate, turn it around. Why should someone not go to DO school? there's any reason why they shouldn't. I think every school is important, or um, equally important. You're about to step into a plant. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you the first doctor in your family? Um, no, my dad was actually a physician um, in Vietnam, but once he came here, he wasn't able to get the papers or transcripts from his medical school, so he had to start completely over from scratch do undergrad again and grad school and whatnot. What so. did you think you wanted to do at the beginning of undergrad? Me? Yeah. I've been wanting to be a physician since I was in elementary school, so I never really had a plan B. Gotcha. Are physicians and MD med students ever mean to you for being a DO student? I haven't experienced that yet, 
but I don't know what's going to happen once we start rotations. So what's the craziest memory of med school so far? Crazy. I think we're all pretty tame and mild people. There's oh, come on. Sell us as being exciting. Oh, gosh. <laughs> crazy. I can't think of anything crazy off the top of my head. What's the most fun you've had in med school? Um, probably spring break my first year. That was the first break we had in a while at that point. We were coming off of a really tough semester and I went to Puerto Rico. I talk about this all the time, but I went to Puerto Rico with a few of my classmates and we just really enjoyed having our time off. It was good. Nice. Are you nervous to be starting clinical rotation soon? Yes and no. I'm like, I'm ready to get out, but at the same time, I'm ready to see what I came to do kind of like a lot of med school is like patient care and I'll finally be able to do a lot more of that these upcoming months. What's the hardest class you've had to take so far? Oh gosh. Um, probably our cardio pulmonary and renal block. I think personally renal was the hardest like systems for me and it was yeah it was a rough time. What's the hardest procedure you've had to learn so far? Maybe intubation. So oh, those are fun. Uh, it was fun, but we had to practice on dummies, and every time you hear it click, that's someone's tooth breaking. And yep. so a lot of us, you just hear click, click, click all around. Yep. Yeah. So, what is your favorite procedure you've learned so far? Maybe central line placement. That was pretty cool. Okay. Yeah. Which class or procedure are you looking forward to learning the most? Hmm. I'm not sure. Or maybe we'll ro rotation. What rotation are you looking forward to most? How about that? I don't know. I'm just excited to just see everything and try everything. Wow. Yeah. So, what time do you normally wake up? This is always fun to ask because oh everybody gosh. has different questions or different answers to these. Um, it ranges anywhere between six and eight thirty a.m. depending on the day. How many hours of sleep are you typically working on? Oh, not enough. But <laughs> I want to say six. Maybe five, six hours? How many hours of sleep are you working on right now? I got a lot of sleep last night. It was pretty good. I went to bed at 11 and woke up at 6.30ish, 6.45. So it's a good day. Yeah, good day for me. But I still need my coffee, so who knows? Makes sense. Are you a night or day shift kind of person? I was a morning person until I started med school, and I think. And now I'm more of a night person. But I want to get back into waking up at 5 or 6 every day. Okay. Who are you most thankful for at your medical school? My classmates. Definitely Aww. my classmates. What's the funniest thing you've seen in a patient chart without, you know, violating HIPAA, of course? Um, so for one of our exams, we had fake patients and our patient was Ariana Grande at the top of the chart and it said she was a 37 year old male. And then <laughs> in the actual history, it said she was a 34 year old female. and I just. That was hilarious. Nice. Gotta love standardized patients. Mm -hmm. oh, what is the most common medical advice you have to give to your patients? Um, maybe lay low on the alcohol. I think I give that advice to a lot of people a lot. Nice. And drink water. That is so important. <laughs> what is your favorite random nerdy medical fact? Oh my gosh. So I watched another one of your interviews and you asked this. She couldn't come up with anything on the spot. And I guess neither can I, even though I've already done some studying for this. <laughs> You'll have to come back to that. Okay. And I guess we can't avoid about talking about it right now. So how has your experience as a medical student been impacted by COVID? Well, a lot of our classes transitioned to online lectures. So I haven't been able to see a lot of my classmates. Are you just going to walk into the street or like? Nope. Oh, okay. okay. I know exactly where we okay, are. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, so a lot of our classes transferred to an online or transitioned to an online class and a lot of our professors aren't used to the technology so it's been pretty difficult to get everything. Gotcha. Yeah. All right, so uh oh, we've talked a lot about your life inside the classroom and when you're studying. So how about your life when you're not studying? But what is your favorite thing to do when you're not working? Um, I'd have to say going on road trips and hiking in different areas around not the suburbs. That's probably <laughs> the best. Just getting out of the suburbs and going somewhere else. Does yeah. your family ever ask you for random medical advice? Yes. I think maybe once a month my mom will call me about like a weird rash on her arm or why she can't sleep. It's always the rashes. Oh my yes. gosh. Yes. What is the weirdest question a family or friend has ever asked you? She asked me to, one of my friends I think she asked me to check probably another rash on her boob. 
Ooh. She's like, I don't have to show you pictures, but I have a lot of questions. So <laughs> that was interesting. Oh. Any pets? I have a cat and my roommate has a cat and we did have a dog for a hot minute. So that was fun. So, dog or cat person? I both. I love animals. It's just easier to take care of a cat right now in med school. Makes sense. Yeah. Favorite animal, not a dog or cat? Raccoons. Raccoons? Hands down raccoons. That is a new one. Really? Yeah, I haven't heard anyone say that. They're awesome. All right. If you could have dinner with anyone in history, who would it be? Gosh. Uh, I can't think of anybody off the top of my head right oh, now. Oh, come on. Oh. Choose a random person. Any random. celebrity. Oh my gosh. Um, maybe Taylor Swift. Yeah. That'd be fun. What would you guys be eating at that dinner? Mac and cheese. Simple girl. <laughs> What is your favorite dish to eat? Oh, uh, maybe mac and cheese, spaghetti. Yeah, I'm a pasta, pasta person. Any go-to restaurants around where you live? Um, there's actually this place called Crossing Bridge Noodles up in Duluth, and it's pretty good. And they're very speedy too with the service. Nice. So yeah. Coffee, tea, or soda? Both. Both? All, all. As you have coffee in your hand? <laughs> well, yes, I have coffee right now, but I, I just like beverages. I don't know. I always have a drink or something in hand. Makes sense. You could do walking across the street with a camera in your face. Oh, makes you feel all famous. Oh, gosh. I'm not meant for this. <laughs> so, all right, this is a question I was meaning to ask you earlier. How much water should you be drinking every day? Because everybody gives me a different answer. Well, it would depend on your body weight and your lifestyle. So that would be a very personalized answer that I can't calculate at the moment. I was say, literally every med student, every doctor gives me a different and completely like non-specific answer. Yeah. Oh? Favorite meal from the hospital cafeteria, if you have one? Mac and cheese. Mac and cheese everything? <laughs> yeah. It's such a good comfort food, you know? We need a lot of comforting as med students, so. Well, outside of that, what's your favorite healthy snack? Oh, goodness. Hummus? Ooh, Hummus good choice. Hummus and broccoli, very good. I would say, what's your favorite guilty snack or cheat meal, but I think I know the answer to it. It varies, but a lot of times it is mac and cheese. Okay. All right, super controversial question. You ready? Yes. <laughs> you look shocked. Oh my goodness. Pineapple on pizza, yes or no? Yes, if not with ham. Okay, all right, I'll take it. Apple or Android? Android. I get a lot of crap for it, but I just messages. think it's a lot more customizable, I guess, to your preferences. Although I think Apple is catching up to that with the new yeah. features they've had recently. Any artistic hobbies you keep up with? <laughs> no, not really. I make reels on Instagram sometimes with my cats and my dogs, but that's about it. <laughs> Top three music artists. Uh, Kygo. Okay. New Age Kesha and St. Motel. All right. What is the best way that you relax after a long day? Taking a walk, I think, by like, we don't have that many park options, but um, I'll try to find a nearby park and just take a walk with my roommate or my friends. Nice. So night in or go out on the town kind of person? Um, probably a night in person. And if we're going out, then just no bars, no clubs. Makes it's sense. Not about that life, yeah. Indoors or outdoors? Outdoors, for sure. Beach or mountains? I knew you were gonna ask this. Um, I'm definitely more of a mountain person, just cause I like feeling tall. But I think during our trip to Puerto Rico, um, that definitely made me reconsider beaches. They're very nice over there in Puerto Rico. <laughs> Would you consider yourself more of an introvert or extrovert? I would say I'm selectively extroverted, depending on the person and how comfortable I feel around them. Do you think that personality trait was a factor in you choosing your field? I don't think so. You don't think so? Mm -mm. Not the people skills or anything that attracts you to patient care? I like having a relationship with my patients, but I would want to have a relationship with my patients. Gotcha. All right, so we're getting close to the end. Only a few more questions left. Getting reflective so here, aren't we? These are, these are reflective questions. You might want to sit down for it because, sure. you know, oh it could get pretty deep. Okay. Deep in thought. So, what do you think, or what did you think you were going to be when you grew up as a kid? 
A doctor. Dang, you just, you knew what you wanted and you're going to get it. I think sometime before elementary school, um, I went to get like an annual checkup with my family doctor, who's also a family friend. And I just had all these questions. Like I was a very curious child and my mom was super annoyed at me. And she could never answer my questions, but he was able to. So I was like, I want to be just like you when I grow up and help people answer all their questions. So nice. that's how I'm here. Is there a different medical career you think you could have done? Different medical career? Yeah, like nursing, RT, OT. I don't think so. No? Yeah. Yeah, you've known your goal from yeah. the very beginning. Yep. That's awesome. So if you didn't do medicine, what do you think you'd be doing right now? I would either be a food stylist or food photographer or an event planner. I think that would be really fun. Those are cool. And you said you didn't have any artistic hobbies to I keep mean, up with. Event planning is not really an artistic hobby, I don't think. It's art. It's artsy. I suppose. I said uh, I made reels on Instagram sometimes. I guess, <laughs> maybe. So, any field in medicine is tough to get into. Were there any times you doubted you would make it as a medical student? Like before or after med school? Both. Um, I remember the first time I applied to med school, I didn't have much guidance or any direction. They kind of just threw all the requirements at me at like my first meeting with the health advisor, and I was just so overwhelmed. Um, that was definitely the first time. And then in medical school, it was probably the third day of class when we learned the entirety of the autonomic nervous system all at once in an hour. And I was just, I came home and I laid down in bed and I was like, I don't know if I'm cut out for this, but eventually I got past it. And here I am, second year. Yeah. Yeah. If you could change one thing about the medical field right now, what would it be? Just kind of like the toxic hazing mentality. I feel like a lot of people or like um, specialties have, um, like residents, they're overworked, underpaid, tired all the time, and they don't have all the benefits that they should. And I think we should treat residents better. Well said. And what can undergrad or even high school students do right now to prepare to go into osteopathic medicine? I think it'd be the same as an MD school too. Um, you could always volunteer at hospitals nearby and just get a good idea of what it's like, or get your foot in the door at least to see what it's like to be in the medical field. I know a lot of times everyone recommends shadowing, but that's a lot harder to get than they actually let on. Um, but volunteering is a good way to do that. Okay. Yeah. If you were to go back, would you change any of your experiences that got you to where you are right now? Honestly, no. Because if I did change anything, I don't know if I'd be in the same place. Very well said. And we are at 73. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. Told you it went by fast. Yeah. So finally, what would you say to the aspiring osteopathic medical student right now? Um, don't compare yourself. And I know everybody says that and it's super cheesy, but everyone's journey is different. Like your skills and your set of expertise or whatever, like that's different and unique to you. So you shouldn't compare yourself. Even if like other people are applying now, maybe it's not the right time for you, you know? Things like that. All right. Words of wisdom, Verena. And that is all I have for you. Awesome. So awesome. Thank, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.